Great. Thank you so much, Pravin, for your really, really excellent case study and all of your insights. So as mentioned, I'm Vanessa Belanger, and I direct the research and scientific portfolio for the National Organization for Rare Disorders. And, okay. And I'm so pleased to share with you today a brief introduction to NORD, our grounding philosophy about the value of patient reported data in rare disease drug development, a look at the process and early findings from a pilot case study, and the importance of what the RDC ADAPT brings to accelerating the rare disease drug development process. So for those tuning in today who may be less familiar with NORD, for over 37 years, NORD has led the way in voicing the needs of the rare disease community through advancing research, through supportive policies and education, through community engagement, providing patient and family services for those who need them most. NORD began as a small group of patient advocates that formed a coalition to unify and mobilize support to pass the Orphan Drug Act of 1983, and shortly after formalized as an independent advocacy organization, working each day on behalf of, in support of, and in representation of all patients and families affected by rare diseases. It's this uh, foundation and perspective paired with a deep understanding that in order to drive treatments for rare diseases, we need data on the natural history of rare conditions that informed the design of and led NORD to launch the I Am Rare program in 2014. The platform supports longitudinal studies that are leveraged for disease characterization for specific rare disease communities and through a core set of common standardized measures Certain data elements can be assessed across rare disease studies supported by our platform. The trajectory for communities that have started to collect data in a well-designed natural history study is remarkable. Over and over, we have seen communities with very little research or commercial interest launch a natural history study, and within a very short period of time, six months to a year, be launched into a new era of engagement with academic and industry partnerships new sustainability pathways for the organization, or reshaping scientific approaches and becoming the go-to resource and reference point for the condition and the patient community. Natural history studies can be a gateway to unlock partnerships, collaborations, and shared data resources. So this slide here highlights some key milestones in Nord's history of engaging with and providing tools for the rare disease community all steps toward providing support for and solutions to some of the greatest needs and complex challenges. And Nord's approach to this work is driven by a philosophy that promotes the idea that we're better positioned together to create great impact and value for advancing research, practice, and knowledge generation for the rare disease community. This grounding philosophy is really interwoven into every aspect of how we approach our work. We're motivated by the goals outlined on this slide, but also deeply invested in actualizing the outcomes from empowering and supporting the community as research partners, both in terms of communities that have infrastructure and resources and those that don't, to building sustained collaborations and innovative models that lead to more meaningful developments and an acceleration of treatments and cures for the rare community. Our aim is that by supporting and leading high quality research, we're a partner in solutions that fill a need. So it's these foundational goals for the I Am Rare program, in particular the two highlighted here, that are really aligned and intersect and complement with some of the goals of the RDC ADAP initiative, which provides an extension for expanding the use, utility, and application of patient registry and natural history data in addition to other data types as well. We have many reasons to judiciously and thoughtfully leverage resources to reduce burden on patients, and one approach to this is data sharing and bringing together data and information that we have available now in order to expand our understanding of disease characterization while new data and tools are also being generated. So as previous colleagues have mentioned, with so many rare diseases and so many that are still underserved, 
Each person and each experience is so critically important and valuable to unlocking the next advancement for their rare condition. With rare diseases and small patient populations, each experience and each data point provides critical insight. Working together to make data sharing easy, while also ensuring that data is collected in the most usable way, is the foundation needed in order to support the development of treatments that are meaningful, reflecting the preferences and priorities of the rare communities, and also available for use in shorter time frames. In other words, it's through this patient-driven data that we arrive at a better understanding of rare diseases, what matters to people, what we need to measure, how to design studies, and develop the most impactful treatments. Rare disease patients and families are powerful contributors of the information that researchers need to accelerate scientific advances. And they are active, strong advocates. Truly, the power of patients cannot be underestimated. This is a motivated community, and as researchers, we really need them to be engaged. And then when we're able to build and leverage larger data sets through RDC ADAPT, for example, the collective power of the data increases and unlocks a whole new type of engagement and analytic possibility for exploration, where the data is so valuable, not only for benefiting a single disease community, but for benefiting the entire rare disease community as a whole. Okay. So with that foundation and backdrop, I want to turn specifically to these two highlighted data types, patient registry data and natural history data, and a case study walkthrough of initial engagement with the phenylketonuria or PKU community and the National PKU Alliance specifically as a pilot data contributor. So PKU is an inherited metabolic disease affecting the brain through increased levels of a substance called phenylalanine in the blood. PKU infants in the United States are diagnosed in the first few days of life through the federally mandated newborn screening program. There are roughly 16,500 people living with PKU in the United States today. The National PKU Alliance was formed in 2008 with the goal of improving the lives of families and individuals associated with PKU through research, support, education, and advocacy, while ultimately seeking a cure. And in January of 2017, the organization launched their patient registry, which is a longitudinal study with open enrollment, currently engaging with approximately 1,200 participants who range in age from three weeks to 68 years and represent over 20 countries. So in a pilot analysis of the PKU data, these are just some examples of the type of data explorations that the tools in RDC ADAPT can support. So understanding the population, different treatment types, efficacy, subpopulation groupings, for example, which are useful for informing clinical trial designs and treatment protocols and characterizing the disease. This foundational information lays the groundwork for more advanced analyses and use cases of the longitudinal data. In addition, the type of tools and analysis that will be available in the RDC ADAPT platform can help to answer questions that are important to, the, to researchers and the community. For example, the highlighted box on the slide here um, is one of the research questions that is important to the community. And with multiple data sets for PKU, the power of the data increases exponentially adding accuracy to models that look at disease progression, variants, and clinical trial optimization. These are some of the important contributions that RDC ADAPT can make to support the acceleration of drug development by introducing greater certainty and informing the design of clinical trials that leverage human, financial, and time resources efficiently. And on this slide, you can see a cross-section of patient experiences with PKU diets, where most participants reported actively and consistently following a PKU diet over time. So just to sum up, the PKU case study is one example of the sort of insights that patient registry and natural history data can bring to RDC ADAPT. And you'll hear additional insights from our panelists later this afternoon. 
designing RDC ADOP to overcome some of the persistent challenges to rare disease drug development is a priority so that as a rare disease community, we can collect better data, design better trials, and get treatments ready for approval faster. By bringing rare disease data that has already been collected together in a central location, RDC ADAP aims to promote an in-depth understanding of the characterization and natural history of a rare disease, accelerate our understanding of rare conditions, and encourage commercial or research interest, encourage innovation and the refinement of clinical trial designs so that resources are utilized efficiently and trials are planned with inclusivity and accessibility in mind, and promote the sharing and expanded use of existing data, opening opportunities for within and across disease discovery. So RDC ADAP will be a success through collaboration of stakeholders. So really all of you, thank you for tuning in today and for joining us. And a special thank you to the National PKU Alliance for being an early data contributor to RDC ADAP. <laughs>